Welcome to a whirlwind get started session of Lipress 101. This will be of interest to those of you who are new to Lipress or need to just get a refresher of how things are put together. Each area of the site can be its own webinar with hints and tips and best practices, especially for accessibility, but we'll be focusing on the in-depth sessions in the future. Today, we'll be starting with a look at the homepage of our Maple Library demo site. Each site is a little bit different due to light customization, but the basic elements are the same throughout. Okay, so I think most of you are aware that this is the site that we use to test out different features and to do these webinars. Okay, so let's just get started. Once you're logged in as a site manager, you will see this black administration bar up at the top here. What I just want to point out is that this is your toggle area to get to your dashboard area and then back to the site in particular. Next, I want to point out that there's this live press help option here too. Um, you can get to a support page, which is our VCLC kind of information page about LivePress. You can get different clicks into some of the reports that have been created by LivePress in the last couple of years, um, access to uh, quick links to the manual. And that being said, let's get to the manual in just a second. Um, but you also have a quick way of getting into the support area of the website. This is where you want to send in your, um, this is where you want to send in all of your ticket requests. Um, sometimes you can uh, directly uh, email me and I will be forwarding it to the ticket queues just for um, our reporting purposes. Um, okay, so the LivePress manual, um, it's constantly going through changes. So I have a little bit of a what's new guide just on the front page. The, the big thing that's what's new is I've updated this 1.1 1, 1 section, which is the very first part that you might want to take a look at, which is the home page elements. So what I've done is I've updated this and I've also kind of indicated the different sections of the website um, and what they're called. So it makes it easier for you to find the information, but I've also included links to the different areas. So if you're very, very new and aren't sure where to go, this is a great place to start. Um, okay, now um, I'm just going to uh, similar to what was in the live press manual, I'm going to just show you and talk through a little bit of the elements of the screen right here. So this is your header area. It includes the information, uh, it has your logo, it has your site information, which is your site title. Um, contact, uh, sometimes you have contact information, sometimes that's in the main menu. It depends on your customization your hours of operation um, and your search box. Now, sometimes the search box looks a little bit different uh, depending on how you've customized your website. The next thing I wanna point out is the info banner. And I think most of you are using that now. Um, initially, I thought it would be great for closures, um, much better than putting it in a slideshow. It takes a long time sometimes to create a slideshow and it's a bit finicky. This is a little bit more particular. I would encourage you to use the info banner for that. Um, but people have also been using that for things like emergency information. So a lot of us in BC have had a lot of issues with fires and closures. This, this area was really good for that. Um, you can also use that to promote different services or other things as well, though. Um, next up, we've got your main menu. And again, depending on your website, it can be customized. Um, and here is your slideshow area. Now we have done a lot of work on making this more accessible and I will be demonstrating on how to add alt text to those slides as well and best practices for those slides. Uh, for your homepage, it's a little bit different than the inner pages of your website. Um, we have inserted this highlights plugin that allows us to create those columns. So this is a bit of a different area for uh, updating your front page. And I'll be demonstrating that today as well. Now down here where this line is, some of you have a site map or a secondary navigation bar. In many cases, however, we've decided to turn it off. Again, this is an example of customization. This is your footer area where 
again, this will show up on every page. And so similar to the header up at the top here, your footer area will show up on every page. So just keeping that in mind, what kind of information do you want to have in your footer area that will make it useful um, for people navigating your website? Um, and then this is your footer text area. So uh, this can be customized. So traditionally it's been used as a copyright area, but a lot of people have also been adding text for land territory acknowledgements here. Okay, so um, what's next that I want to talk about? Okay, so what I wanted to do to uh, show you the website is kind of do some brief demos of activities that a new person would be probably tasked with doing. So one of the first things is a closure date. So I already talked about that, but the info banner is probably the best way of doing it. So I just want to demonstrate that right now. So we have Labor Day coming up and Generally, people want to have this um, posted up on your website about a week before. So it's a little bit too early to have that up here, but I, you know, I'm also going to be talking about fake situations. I'm fake going on vacation next week and uh, my fake library uh, doesn't have anybody else to update this. So I put it up way too early, but there's a better way of doing that. Let's take a look. Let's toggle into your administration area. You get to your dashboard and at the side are all the different options of your website. What I want you to take a look at is this site manager area. And this is where all of your basic information about your website is held. So your contact information, which is your address and your email that showed up in that footer area that I showed you. Then the hours of operation. So most of you in the, the header area um, have those hours of operation um, and most of them uh, are attached to this area right here. So you can always update your hours of operation here. For those of you who have done it a slightly different way, it's still useful to have those hours of operation up to date in here because that's what shows up on Google um, and some of your uh, browsers. So just make sure that this information is up to date. Um, next, I want to show you, uh, so these are the search box links and the my account link. Um, those relate to uh, these two links right here. So just know that you can uh, customize those yourself. Um, but what we want to look at is the info banner right now. So you can see that what I've got here is the message and I have it enabled and then I had hit save changes once I once I created this information. What we want to do though is we want to have it start next week. So what I can do is just enter that in into this um, calendar clicker. So that's done. So I want it to show up next Monday, August 27th and then this the 12 a.m. and the 12 p.m. thing, I still get confused about that sometimes. Uh, turns out that in legal contracts, what's often done is 12.01. And then we can figure out really what's going on here. So what does this mean? It's going to actually show up on August 27th at 12.01 a.m. So that means... <laughs> In the morning, I think that's right. Okay, if I'm not right about that, let me know in the chat. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to turn it off the next week, um, September on the holiday, September 3rd at 12.01 a.m. No, because that would mean that it would turn off in the morning. So I don't want to do that. I want to turn it off at say 6 p.m. Let's see, because that's when I would like for it to be removed. Now, I'm not actually sure if that is, oh, I probably should have done it down here. Okay. There. Okay, close enough. All right, save changes. Now, when you do this, make sure that your enable button is on because that is going to allow it to turn on and turn off at these times. Now let's check out and make sure, yeah. So now it has been removed because it won't turn on until next week. 
All right. Okay, so the next one that I wanted to do is talk about how you can also use the events calendar to do that library closure date. I find this events calendar widget really, really useful for your front page. And again, if you are new to LiPress and you just want to make sure that things are dynamic on your front page, this is a great way to do it. So most of you have this widget. If you don't, consider it and also consider how you can optimize it. So one of the best things that you can do is put a bunch of different things in here. So uh, let's put that closure date in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle back to my administration area, go into my events um, uh, module of the website, and this is what I am going to see. Um, so these are my different events here. You can see that I have I had a closure day for um, Canada Day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a single standalone event, add new, um, and it is going to be uh, a Labor Day closed. I'm not gonna put any description in there. I am going to set a featured image and I have an image that I use for stat holidays usually. Um, oops, I forgot to show you that this is where you add the alt text. So writing your alt text is a little bit of an art. I've got information about that in the LiPress manual under the accessibility um, area. So take a look at that. But this is where what you want to do when you add your icons to your events um, area. So I'm going to set the featured image and I'll show you why this is more important than putting it in here in just a moment. Let's see, um, I've got my dates here. So what this is telling you is that it's going to start at 8 a.m. on the 20th and end at 5 p.m. on the 20th. Okay, but this is an all day kind of thing. So I'm just gonna click it there. Um, and I think everything else is good. And I'm going to publish it. And now we're going to take a look at the front page and see what's happened. Okay, so you can see that that's actually not what I wanted to do <laughs> because I forgot to change the date. So let's go back in there and edit it. I'm gonna pretend that this was a teachable moment for you. So you always double check your dates um, and it's going to be September 2nd and I'm gonna update it. And I'm gonna go back to this and now here we go. We've got it uh, correctly in order, it's showing up. This looks good. Um, it has the featured image. That's how you get the featured image in there. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about as a quick review for the events. But next we're going to do something a little bit um, more involved. So you might've noticed that I have a D&D &D program that I want to um, start in the fall at my fake library. Um, so under my programs, I don't have that in here. Um, I don't have any of my events showing up in my calendar for the D. Oh, I do have the D and D launch party. Um, but let's pretend I haven't done it yet. I did set this up just to save time. Um, but what I wanted to let you know is kind of the best way of approaching this. So when you're creating a program that is more than one standalone date, like what we just did with the, um, with the closure date, what you want to maybe start with is your series area. So when I'm showing you the series here, think program. So I've got a D&D &D program or Dungeons and Dragons program that I created as a series. So this is the series page. This is going to be kind of like your collection area of the different events in there. So let's go in here and I can show you, oops, I just want to remove this image. Um, so this is your series page. Let's view what it looks like right now. So I wanna update that. I wanna view the series. And the reason why the series page is really useful is because it allows you to create a little bit of a brochure type information. And then all of the series, um, all of the events associated with that series will show up on this page. And you can see that it's this really, um, 
precise URL that you can send out. And so all the information is all together on this page. Um, now let's go back and edit the series. Um, so you can see, I just have a, some brief information. Um, there's no featured image on your series because what is promoted is the events and the events calendar. But what we can do is just add um, an image here. So this is where I'm gonna demonstrate adding media. So I'm going to upload a file and I am going to choose this one. So this is a free, um, copyright free image that I have found um, and it was generated by AI and this looks pretty good and I'm going to then make sure it's got some alt text. So let's see, um, what would be dragon raving fire on book on open book there. So that is, that is a descriptive alt text for the image. Now, some people will say not to create alt text for just descriptive images. This isn't a functional image. It's not going to be a link to anything. So I'm not describing what the image will do, such as link to a page. It's just sitting there to look decorative, but I would still argue that um, creating alt text for all images is probably the best practice for you because you don't want to pick and choose what people might want to be able to access on your page. So this will be useful for anybody using a screen reader. They'll know what the image is. This will also be useful for people who are using a low bandwidth. When the image doesn't load, they want to make sure that they aren't missing something. So this will be, this will show up as um, text if the image doesn't load. So this, it's a useful practice to just start describing all types of images. So I'm going to update that now. And now I'm going to update the series. We're going to view the series and that looks pretty good. It might be a little bit too big, um, but you know, that's something that you can adjust as well. Okay, so next what I wanna do is make sure that I have events for it. So let's go in um, and take a look at what I've already created. So what I wanted to do was create two types of events, a launch party, uh, which will happen on one day. And then I'm going to have the ongoing campaigns happening for the DND club on the subsequent Saturday mornings. So it's two different kinds of things. So right here, I created a standalone event um, but it does have times. I, I selected 11 to one on the same day. So it's one event that happens and uh, I haven't set a featured image. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that image. And now I've got a D&D icon. So I use that same um, graphic image to then create this square icon because I would recommend doing a square for these types of images because just because they look really nice on the front page. And I'll also show you why too. Oh, don't forget to put in your alt text. So this is where it's a bit of a functional icon. So uh, this will be D&D club icon. Um, dragon raising the fire on a book link to D and D event. So I've set it here so that it will show up in the widgets and on the listing page. Um, and this is most important. You've attached, now I've attached it to a series. So when I created this event, I had already created the series and now I'm going to attach it to it. So then I'm going to update this. I'm going to view the event, take a look at it. Um, so it's a launch party. There's one more thing that I want to do with this because it's an important event. It's a standalone event. Let's go back in and I just want to show you something else. If you scroll down here, uh, featured event. This is what I would suggest for those events that are not recurring. So you have a lot of programs that have recurring events every week and people are just looking for those. If you want to really highlight a featured event, I would click on this one here. 
uh, and I'll show you what that will do. So let's take a look at the front page. And you will scroll down here and you see it's really subtle, but it just adds a little bit of something here. And then if we view the calendar in the list form, you can see that it's just a little bit more highlighted here, that there's something going on here. One more time, if we take a look at the month view in the calendar view, okay, so it's the next month. I'm going to go to September. And you can see that it does just pull it out a little bit more. And then these are the, the regular ongoing campaigns afterwards. Okay, so just wanted to demo that. And now what we're going to do is just to go back into events. Um, so I've created my future launch event. If you subscribed to the, the extra fee-based service that LivePress offers, which is your ticketing or um, your RSVP function, uh, that's an extra um, nominal fee throughout the year. Um, but on your launch page, that would be a useful place to put your registration if you wanted to start collecting those names for your uh, program. Not going to demo that here. There's lots of information in the live press manual about it, but that's just something I would recommend. Now, with the ongoing campaigns, let's just take a look at that. Um, you can see that they're showing up because I created a series, uh, um, or sorry, I created a recurring event that I then attached to the series. And you can tell that because right over here under the series area, you can see that I've attached it there. And then this little icon here, this tells you that it is a recurring event. So what that means is, is when you go into one of these, that, um, this has been set up on a weekly basis. It happens um, every week on the same Saturday and you don't adjust those start and end dates here. This is for a single event. And then, um, so this will happen 11 to one on this September 21st. And then down here is where you add the recurring information and it will generate those events in the future. Um, so it will then happen on September 28th between 11 and 1 p.m. Okay, so some sometimes people make that mistake and they adjust the dates here. That's not how that works. This is just indicates the start and the end time on this day. And then this is how you generate those other events and the recurring part of it. Okay, and this shouldn't have been there. So we're gonna delete that. All right, um, and you can also see that I have not created this as a feature event. Oh, but I have forgotten to set the featured image. Let's just do that right now. And again, let's just make sure. Yeah, we've got the alt text in there. So that's good. And we're going to update this. And we're going to say, um, because this is a part of a recurring event uh, situation, we have a choice that we can um, do this and following events or all events. I want to make sure that I capture all the events in this case. So I've clicked on that. All right, now let's go in, view the event. This looks pretty good. I've got the organizer in there, the phone number and the email. Um, I have the venue. Uh, these are optional things that you can do, but you might want to explore that. That's all in the, um, the page here. So right down here, you can set up your location and the organizer. Um, and this is, generally we don't deal with costs. You can just ignore this and it won't show, um, it just won't show anything. If you were to put zero in here, it will show up as free on your website, but then that gets confusing because if that's free or the other one's not, it's, so it's just something to be aware of. Okay, let's take a look. And I know I'm going really fast, but this is being recorded. So hopefully um, if there's anything you need to revisit, you can uh, go to that. Now, what I wanted to do was just make sure that the series looks good. So I'm gonna come in here and yeah, everything looks good. So we have this branding image that we're using throughout. So it's not confusing for people. Um, next thing what we're going to do is we're going to create a banner for this. So let's go back 
into the Maple demo site. Actually, I just wanted to show you here. So this is where your slideshow banner is. You can see that I'm advertising a lot of the um, digital resources, but the D&D &D Club is something brand new that I want to advertise. So I'm going to create a banner. So most of you are familiar with Canva. I do have information um, in the live press manual on best practices to create a slideshow banner in Canva. So I've already created one. Let's go into uh, the site manager, slideshow manager, and I'm going to show you how you can update that uh, the slideshow. So right here, this is the active slideshow. Here's all the information here. So these are the individual slides. This is the alt text um, information. And then this is the link to the various pages. Now I have a lot of opinions on how you should best use your slideshow. And I would really recommend that you only advertise your particular events for your library. There's maybe better ways of um, promoting uh, community events. If not the slideshow, it just gets confusing if you are using the slideshow to then um, kick people out of your website by linking to external sources. I would always recommend linking to an internal page on your website. Um, so now I don't have my slideshow um, visible here or my slide that I want here, my banner. So what I need to do is I need to go into media, this media area, and I need to add a new media file. And I'm going to select that from my computer. And it is this one here. Okay, I'm going to open it. Okay, that's great. Uh, we've got the DD banner there. And then what I need to do is I need to put slide in here. Now, most of the time when you're uploading things to your media file, you want to put in your alt text here, but that's not how the slideshow works. So we're just going to ignore that for a moment. The reason why I put slide down here for media tags is it will tell your media library that it's a slide. So now you just X out, we go back into the site manager into slideshow manager. And now because we've indicated that it's a slide, it's being pulled into your slide images. And we are going to maybe just make this our first one. I've just pulled it straight into there. Um, and now I'm going to edit this. I am going to create a better alt text. Um, so, this is this is a functional link when somebody looks at this slide um, or is uh, engaging with the slide it really is acting to a link to the series page so link to information about the d and d club um, and then let's see campaign for teens, Saturdays 11 to 1. And this is why I would also recommend you don't put a lot of text information on your slideshows because you really need to consider that for what is going to, uh, what is, what you are going to need to include in your alt text. Now, just visually having um, few, a fewer words on your on your slide is better anyways for just capturing somebody's interest. What you want to do is intrigue somebody to click on it and then they can get more information by clicking on it. So what I now want to do is grab my series link. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cheat, go into here, see this little box. This is the series icon. It gets me to my series page. I'm going to copy this, grab it, and put this here in the slideshow manager, and I'm going to save the collection. Now let's go to our front page just so I can show you how that works. So you can see this is 
just capture somebody information. Somebody is looking at your slideshow. It's like an ad, you click on it and it brings you to this page. It's the same image. Somebody knows right away that it's going to, to where they're expecting. Um, we've got information about the club and all of the details here. So really useful that way. Um, all right, so that is, oh, one other thing, I want to update my programs and events on my main menu now. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you might want to do now, some of you know a different way, this is the way I'm going to show you in this webinar. What we're going to do is go up to this customize area on your admin bar. And this is where you can get to your menus. And so just to remind you, I want to put this link which is a series page um, in here under programs because where it says series, I'm thinking programs. So I'm going into my main menu and you can see that this is a, approximates the function of your menu. So this is your um, main menu tab or label. And then the next uh, section here is your submenu. And then these are your item or list items, and that's here. So it's three levels, and you can't have more than three levels. Um, otherwise, they won't show. So what I'm going to do is scroll all the way to the bottom. I'm going to add an item. Then this uh, section pops up. And I know that what I want to add is series. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to look for it. And this is the one that I want to add and it pops it into the bottom, which is not where I want it. So I'm going to grab it and drag it up here to where, oh, programs and events. Um, and I'm gonna put it right here and Summer Reading Club is over. So I'm gonna put it to the bottom, but I'm not gonna get rid of it because it's linking to a series page. And I'm gonna show you why in just a moment. So I'm going to hit publish and sometimes everything updates in your view area. Sometimes it won't until you come out. There it is. Okay, so Dungeons and Dragons, now the program information, you can get right to it. It's really handy that way. Now, why did I wanna leave Summer Reading Club there? Because we offer Summer Reading Club at my fake library every year. So what I just wanna do is I wanna come in and edit this series. And I am going to take out all this information because it's relevant to 2024. And I'm gonna do stay tuned for summer 2025. And I'm going to update it. So now anybody who you know, possibly have moved to your neighborhood and it's like, wow, you know, that's one of my favorite things about the library is the summer reading club. I really hope that they have it. Oh, they do. That's terrific. And then if I click on it, then I would know that I need to just come back and check it out next year. So I think that's just one way of keeping things up to date. Um, and that's why that series page is so useful because it will, once you start adding um, information to that and events and different things to that series, it's all gonna come up on that page just automatically next year. And it's just a handy way of keeping everything separate from your main pages. Okay, so now what time are we at? I am already way over time. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just gonna quickly talk about highlights right now. Um, and the highlights are right here. So what I just wanted to show you is how you can get into them. So I think you probably um, realize that if I go, if I wanted to update a page, so say I wanted to update the library information of my fake library, um, come here and I wanted to, you know, maybe update the hours. So let's go to the contact us page because the hours are right here. So what if I had a closure on the hours? What if I wanted to put a little message about, by the way, we actually are closed on stat holidays. I can come up here, I've navigated to this page, I can come up here and do edit page, and I can come in here and I can put in that message. So note, 
closed on all stat holidays. Okay, great. What if I wanted to then highlight that our online resources are available 24 seven all the time? So this is great, um, that's cute. But what I really should do is make a link to online resources right here. So I'm gonna make a link to this right now. And here's something that some of you may not know. I'm just gonna start typing. Huh? So now the pages are going to come up based on what I start typing. And I'm like, yeah, this is the page that I wanted to link to. And it, I didn't have to go out like I did with the slideshow manager. I can just start typing it there. The slideshow manager is a little bit of a different thing. If you're in the pages, though, this is a really handy tip. So now we're going to update this page and we're going to view the page. And there's our link directly to our online resources. Terrific, I updated that super quickly. So now I've shown you a little bit of a tips on how to edit a page. Let's go into your Maple demo site though. And, oh, sorry, I wanted to show you your highlights. Um, so we're on the front page and you might want to just click on edit page here and you're gonna be surprised that it's blank. And remember the front page is handled a little bit differently. It's in your highlights area. Okay, here we go. You can see that I've got um, a number of different columns that I've created or highlight columns. Some of them are set to draft and the other ones here, uh, one, two, three, um, these obviously refer to the different positions. So just be aware of that. So what I wanted to do is go into the library news and just maybe take a look and update something about the book sale. Um, perhaps I wanted to uh, create a page about Friends of the Maple Public Library. So I'm going to create a link and I'm going to look for it. Okay, so it doesn't look like I have a page. So this is where I'm just going to very quickly show you how you can create a page. So there's nothing I can update here right now. What I'm going to do is come up here to new and I'm going to click on page. So now I'm gonna do Friends of the Library and I am going to um, just create the blank page right now and I'm going to edit it later. I just wanna make sure that the link works. I'm gonna hit publish right now and we've got the page published. It is blank, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna go back into the highlights and I am going to go back into the library news and I am going to now add this, friends of the library. I'm going to apply it and I'm going to update it. And we're going to go into the Maple demo site and there we go. So this would be an excellent page once I've edited it for my fake library to get people to know more about the friends of the library and their book sales. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm gonna end the recording here. Thanks so much.